received a text or an email and you looked at it and it's just a garbled bunch of letters and numbers and you thought to yourself, what is this person trying to say? Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests, a well-written letter communicates clearly, always. But the art of writing a letter is slipping away. Please don't misunderstand me. I love technology. I love the immediacy and the fact that it keeps us connected. When my daughter went to school in Montreal, other moms would say to me, oh, you must miss her so much. How could I? We were never out of touch. By the time I got home from the bus station, I'd have three texts waiting for me. There'd be a few more when the bus got to Kingston and she woke up from her nap. And then about three and a half hours later, I'd be getting a text about how cold it was or how deep the snow was. But there's something about a letter, whether it's written on fine vellum with a fountain pen or scribbled on a notepad with an HB pencil. A letter is thoughtful, it's permanent, and it's personal. A letter is a thoughtful thing. By thoughtful, I don't necessarily mean it's, it's conveying a thoughtful message. What I mean is you have to think about it. You have to think about what you want to say and how you want to say it. Before you begin to lay ink on the page, you have to have your beginning, your middle, and your end planned. It's not like an email. An email we can quickly type up and we hit send and then we feel that stab of regret. Because <laughs> we realize that we've reacted too quickly and perhaps overreacted, and what we've sent was a mistake. But a letter gives us a cooling off period. We can sit, think, is this the message we really want to send? If it isn't, we can crumple it up and throw it away. But once a letter is sent, it becomes more permanent than electronic communication. I know there's some people that would disagree with that statement, specifically those who've had their emails forensically retrieved and used against them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but for most of us, a quote unquote special email would just get lost in the deluge that hits our inbox every single day. But a special letter, we save those. Has anyone ever had the experience of cleaning out someone's home after they've passed away? If you have, you probably found a cache of letters, tucked in a drawer, in a trunk in the attic, or perhaps in a box in the back of the closet. There might be love letters from a, a husband who is serving overseas, or letters from a relative that everyone lost touch with long ago, or perhaps letters from someone you've never heard of, from some long ago past. Letters, they they record our personal history. They document our relationships and who and what's important to us. And we write letters because they're personal. Letters are where we express what's in our hearts. Our thoughts, our feelings, gratitude, sympathy. When I was growing up, this was before the internet was even conceptualized. And yes, I know my years are showing, and probably even more so, when I tell you stamps were six cents. <laughs> but when a friend moved away, we didn't post on their wall, we sent them a letter. And every couple of weeks, letters would cross in the mail on their way back and forth across the country. That's how we kept in touch, we maintained our relationships. But now letters are reserved for special messages. Genuine gratitude, heartfelt sorrow. I've kept a number of letters over the years. One was a letter that I received the day after my grandfather died. He dropped in the mail, and I keep it. And I know that he loved me, and he was thinking about me right till the end. I have another letter from my godmother. She wrote it to me on the eve of my marriage. And she, she reminisced about watching me grow up and the times that we had together. And her, her hopes for me. Now, of course, I'm divorced now, so clearly that didn't work out for me. <laughs> but oh, the man. sentiment <laughs> remains. <laughs> My mother kept letters, too. When we went through her things, we found a letter from her father. And like most families, mine had its complicated relationships. 
and her relationship with her father was one of those. And in this letter, it was written fairly near the end of his life, he told her how much he appreciated what she was doing and what a special person she was. And I, I hope that that helped to heal her heart because I know she was there for him in the last final days of his life. I'd like to close with a quote. Catherine Field from the New York Times said it better than I. She said, a good handwritten letter is a creative act. And not just because it's a visual and tactile pleasure. It's a deliberate act of exposure, a form of vulnerability, because handwriting opens a window on the soul in a way that cyber communication can never do. You savor their arrival, and later, take care to place them in a box for safekeeping. So next time you think of emailing a friend a message, maybe think about picking up a pen. Mm -hmm. Write a letter instead. I love it. Thank you.